because I really don't know what I would do if I didn't have some work that I had to get to. Hello, hello, hello. This is Shirley Crawford, the owner of Second Chance Consulting and the executive director of the Women's Business Center RVA. Here in my office with episode two of Work Hard Holics. I don't know what that was. But so, uh, welcome back. And if it's your first time here with us, welcome one and all. So if you're just visiting with us, you might be wondering what exactly is a work hard aholic? In simple enough terms, it's someone who is always doing something. So I talked about in episode one, feel free to go back and, you know, review that, uh, about the fact that there are certain people who just don't sit down. Um, we like to keep moving. We like to keep doing. We, you, you see our posts. You see us always like on the move. You see us at every festival. You see us out and about. We're always doing something. That is the nature. It's our heart. It's our anthem. It's our creed. It's our call. It's our work hard aholics way of life. So, so we're all gathered together here because that's who we are. Or you're observing like, uh, I don't know. Let's see. And so we're going to start this party off with not only just understanding that that's what it's about, but I'll give you an example. You might be a work hardaholic if you're still working even on vacation. You can say your boss made you do it. I've used all the excuses. You can say, well, I'll just feel better when I get it all done. The point is who you are. Embrace it. Love yourself. No yourself <laughs> and myself likes to work I, I really I love what I do and even before when I work for other people I just like getting things done I like a clean slate I like things being in order not necessarily neat and tidy just done like if you ask me a question I know the answer I'm ready for it that's what I like that's what I do so I remember speaking in that vein I remember my first cruise ever and I remember the first two days of the cruise, I spent it obsessing about Wi-Fi. I, I, I couldn't get the Wi-Fi to work. Um, that was back before, you know, cruises had internet streaming all the way through the boats. And I remember I was just paying to get the service and nothing was working. And I was so frustrated. And so that kind of also takes me to... Um, the balance of being a work hardaholic because it's one thing to love to work and it's another thing to stress and worry about work over here love i love what i do and how i do it and how it makes me feel and i'm not justifying that to the rest of you who don't do it the same way over here i'm getting more gray hair than i've had before and mm, some of you losing hair, um, upset stomachs. I feel like the Pepto-Bismol commercial, but anyway, uh, you're, you're having physical ramifications. And here's the thing. When I am not in balance, I know it. I know it first. And so you should be aware of yourself, of your body, of your emotions, of your feelings. Like when I am, I am a pretty like level even keel person so frankly when i'm angry with you i speak softer not louder i don't get all riled up i lower my voice i say exactly what i have to say i tell you the repercussions and i mean it just like i said it and if it comes to the repercussions i follow through with them the same way that i told you and i don't have to yell about it so it's not a blood pressure raising thing for me but sometimes i can i can feel like the blood rushing or recently it wasn't all that long ago i mean i have a lot going on people the center is an amazing thing and we're doing really well come by for a visit 1510 willow lawn drive across the street from kroger on or at willow lawn looking right at it like i see people doing their shopping there's a lady in a blue shirt she she's not paying me any money but okay sometimes i wave and people wave back i'm sure they're like what's that lady doing in the window um Okay, but back to you. Uh, so when things are happening, I can tell, I can tell when I'm getting stressed. 
I can feel it. Um, I'll be, I'll talk to people, and sometimes I'm not as patient as I normally would be. Like I can feel myself, you know, biting at people, and it's never a nasty bite. It's always a professional, but still, it's got a little venom in it. I feel it. Uh, I feel it when I'm trying to rest. It might take me a few minutes longer, or there are certain things that I just know. Like I know it because I know myself. I'm self-aware, and I realize that something's changing. This doesn't feel right, and I normally try to deal with it immediately. So that's why we have these play harder moments brought to you by A Joy of Living essentially. So yeah, I work hard. I work really hard and I love it. I work efficiently. I work smart. I get a lot done. Um, and so you always, I, 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 as I said before, people are always asking me, how are you able to do this? And I know you do this and I saw you over here speaking. I saw you over here. You were at that festival that I was at the other day. And then I saw you posting. You were at the beach and then you were here. How are you doing it all? I work harder, pure and simple. And I do it well, but I also make sure that I play harder. And, um, uh, Part of the way I do that, once again, is that I use a lot of what I call time tool techniques. So there are lots of different things that I do. I won't dump them all on you right now because you are you're, you can only probably take in one to do. So one thing I do is the Pomodoro timer. Pomodoro. Doesn't that sound exciting? It sounds really like, ooh, what is that? It's Italian, actually, for tomato. So, the, so like, this is my little time. I'm holding time in my hand. Okay, anyway. Cheesy moment brought to you by Kraft. The Pomodoro timer, you can get in increments. I actually have it on, on my computer. I have a lovely Apple MacBook Pro. She's amazing, custom designed. I love her. Um, I use my timer, and what you do is you can get it as an app. You can put it on your phone. You can put it on your computer. You can use it whichever way is best for you. And you tell it what you're working on. And so it, it'll give you like an item. First item will be you have 30 minutes to work on it. Then it tells you to take a break. And then you'll have 15 minutes for the next item. And it just takes you through. Um, and it makes you take breaks, but it makes you really accountable. So what happens whenever I'm using the timer, if you're emailing me, if you're calling me, and that's not what my item is, then I'm not addressing it. I tell people all the time, you don't pay my cell phone bill. I do. And so I don't feel obligated to answer the phone. I don't. I will respond. My general policy that I tell everyone is I'll respond back to any request within 24 hours, which I think is highly respectful. If it's an emergency, then state that it's an emergency. I hate it when someone says, oh, it's an emergency, and then it's something, I'm sorry, stupid. So... Uh, I make sure people are real clear about what's an emergency, what do they need. If it's something else, I always respond back within 24 hours, oftentimes a whole lot quicker. But um, my favorite phrasing is under promise, over deliver. So if I tell you I'll get back within 24 hours and I get back to you in 20 minutes, I have under promised and over delivered. So you always feel like you got the good end. And I always have the cushion that I need. And that helps me stay sane. So that's part of my time tool technique. So my time tool technique for this week is the Pomodoro timer. If I'm a good egg, I'll put a link in down here somewhere. Post somehow to get it. I don't know. I like pointing at the screen. To, oh, anyway, I will share that information. It's a really good technique, but only if you're going to do it properly. If you're not going to do it properly, it means nothing. Not a nuke. Okay, uh, but that's the whole point. You have to put these time tool techniques into practice, and then that way you can be more efficient, and then you can truly work harder so that when I leave the office, I have left, surely has left the building, and I mean it. I don't feel obligated to answer the phone. I don't feel obligated to respond to your email. I don't feel obligated to do any of these things. Even though I might be looking at my laptop, I might be working. My obligation is what I committed, which is nine to five. Actually, those those aren't those aren't even my office hours. But hey, you get the idea. So um, that's my play harder moment. And then I want to share with you something else in general that I love, which are words, palabras. I love words. They're amazing. So we're gonna have our word for the day. And so today's word is pulchritude. And every time I hear it, I think of a pugilist. I feel like it's a fight, like something's going on, and we're going to battle. That's not what it means. Pulchritude, in all of its splendor, means beauty. 
Isn't that pretty? The word isn't so pretty, but pulchritude. Use that in a sentence. Someone will be very impressed. Pulchritude. Okay, I'm, I'm, sulk I'm, I'm soaking in the pulchritude of this moment. <sighs> so beautiful. Okay, that's the word for the day. And yes, I'm that geek. Perfectly okay with it. I work hard. I like big words. <laughs> I love words, um, personal moments. I actually went out with a guy because he used tensorial in a sentence. And at the time he used it, I didn't know what it meant. Do you know what it means? Um, at the time I had just gone green. And so he was complimenting me on my tensorial effect. Lottie dotty. So <laughs> that's what happened there. Okay, we're about to wrap up now. I'm getting into my happy, silly mode. So um, we've shared a little bit at You Work Hard Arlocks and hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, I do want to share with you a little bit about the schedule of what's happening here at the Women's Business Center. Once again, located at 1510 Willow Lawn Drive and Suite 100 directly across the street from Willow Lawn. I look at Kroger every single day out of my windows. I have two windows gotta have a corner office right and so um, the schedule what we have happening here one you are welcome to come by for a tour anytime you can email ty 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 at wbcrva.com you can call our office at 804-921-3844 that's 804-921-3844 to schedule an appointment um in addition to that it's June, Junio, woohoo, Trey exciting. And so June, June 20th, we have a paint and sip. And so we're doing that in partnership with the Tipsy Sommelier. So we're gonna do a lovely little painting at $35, have some fun, make it a girl's night, make it a date night. Either way, have fun, come on out. There are still spaces available. I'll post it below in the comment section or I might post it somewhere somewhere out there for you to see either way and then on july 20th we are fortunate i feel really honored we are fortunate to be the richmond premiere location for the movie decade of fire we'll be showing it at the bowtie theater july 20th at 2 30 p.m say that again with me 2 30 p.m at the bowtie theater july 20th and the crazy thing is, it's free. And so, but you have to register. You have to register because there are only a certain amount of seats. And so that's it. But earlier that day, we'll be, we'll be hosting a housing event. So you'll be seeing more of that coming as well. Um, so there'll be groups like Home and RHA and Realtors and Bankers and all kinds of things dealing with housing. Because the documentary is also about da 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 housing. Catch that theme. Okay, so uh, we've been here for a few minutes, so we're going to wrap this up. So once again, my lovely work hardaholics, glad to have you. Always a pleasure. I'm going to share this little personal story, and then I'm going to say bye-bye. See you next time, as Carol Burnett would say. Um, I received an email just a few minutes before I was I'm posting this, which is why it's you know, fresh in my mind. I got an email from Toronto Western Direct. Which is a law firm who was not paying me any money to tell you their name. I'm just saying. They were my attorneys when I was in a car accident a few years ago. Very sad time. Anyway, um, so they sent out this email saying, hey, we have all these tickets for Flying Squirrel. So if you are a former client of Trump or Weston Direct, you can email them and uh, see about getting yourself some tickets to go see the Flying Squirrels right here in Richmond. And uh, so the email was very explicit. It gave all the details of what to do. And so my mind was on the fact that I was about to do this post. So I wasn't quite focused on what it was saying. So I picked my phone. So let me call them real quickly, get the tickets and you know, post this video. I call and the lady very politely told me, uh, well, we appreciate that. But if you would please just respond back to that email with blah, 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 blah. And, and I'm looking at the email. A part of me was like, I don't understand why she can't just take my information. I'm talking to her right here. But while she's speaking, I'm looking at my computer screen and I'm noting that's exactly what it says in the email. Exactly. It says, please reply to this email with your name, number of tickets. It gives very explicit details. I share this story to say this. Treat others the way that you want to be that, that, that you want to be treated. So it's so easy to be impatient. It's so easy to snap at people. And then you can't ever take that back. 
And so in that instance, I'm the idiot who wasn't following the instructions. And and I want to remember to be empathetic to the next idiot who isn't following instructions. And remember that I too fall into the idiot category at times. And so with that in mind, we can be a little kinder, a little nicer, a little gentler, a little more patient, a little more loving, you know, all those positive words through an ER, we can be all those things that we remember that we're not perfect either. So on that note, work harder, Harlicks. I'm gonna do a little more work before I go home. So you do you. <laughs> and I'm gonna do some work. So happy entrepreneuring. Look forward to seeing you next week on the next episode of Work Harder Holics. Alrighty, bye bye. Cause I really don't know what I would do if I didn't have some work that I had to get to. Da 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 da